Hello readers, welcome to Purple Pebble. Today we are reading Granny's Kitchen, written by Sadie Smith, illustrated by Ken Daly. It's a beautiful story about a little girl who learns how to cook from her grandma. So this story teaches you that you should always keep trying and trying until you get it right. So let's read. Shelly Ann lived on the beautiful island of Jamaica, where the sun is always shining and the weather is sweet. Her grandmother had a lot of vegetables and fruit trees growing in her yard and all around her house. She even had a big mango tree. Shelly Ann liked to climb it or lie under it, snacking on mangoes all day long. Shelly Ann loved when her grandmother took her to the market to buy rice, which she would sometimes carry on top of her head. That always made Shelly Ann laugh. Shelly Ann loved her grandmother. In fact, Granny was Shalian's most favorite person in the whole wide world. One afternoon, Shalian was picking vegetables in the garden when the scent of sweet peppers made her very hungry. So she went into the house to ask her grandmother for something to eat. Granny, how do you make dumplings? Shalian asked. Granny smiled and said, Kael, you better can cook. And she promised to teach her. Granny pulled out her iron pot and recited the recipe to Shelly Ann from memory. Net two cups of flour with three quarters of a cup of water, said Granny. And don't forget the pinch of salt. Shelly Ann rushed to the pantry to get the flour. Her mouth watered as she imagined taking a bite of a soft, fluffy dumpling. But when she took them out of the frying pan, they were all black and burnt. I can't cook, cried Shelly Ann. Don't worry, said Granny. Dumplings burn easily if you leave them in the frying pan for too long. You'll get it right next time. The next day, Shelly Ann was playing hopscotch on the sidewalk when she became hungry. So she went inside and asked her grandmother for something to eat. Granny, how do you make aki? Granny replied, Gael, you better can cook. Granny pulled out her recipe card and read the instructions to Shelly Ann. Pick a ripe aki that has split open on its own. Peel the aki and boil only the yellow parts in water until tender. Then fry until cooked through. Make sure you do not ever eat the seeds. Luckily, Shelly Ann could just reach the bright orange fruit on the tree in Granny's backyard with a little help. The yellow aki swirled around the pot until it was soft and tender. When Shelly Ann was finished frying it, she thought the aki looked a bit like scrambled eggs. But when she took a bite, the aki was too soft. I can't cook, cried Shelly Ann. Don't worry, said Granny. Aki is easy to overcook. You will get it right next time. A few days later, Shelly Ann was skipping rope on the porch when her stomach grumbled. So she went to ask her grandmother for something to eat. Granny, how do you make salt fish? Granny smiled and answered, Kael, you better can cook. Granny went to the cupboard to pull out a skillet and to gather the ingredients. Soak the caught fish in water for two hours and then saute all your vegetables and herbs. Add the salt fish, mix it all together and cook until tender. The scent of spices filled the entire kitchen. Shelly Ann was so excited to try the fish, but when she took a bite, it was too salty. I can't cook, cried Shelly Ann. Don't worry, you'll get it right next time, said Granny. The fish needs to soak a long time to make it less salty. The following morning, Shelly Ann was chasing chickens around the coop. It made her very hungry, so once again she went inside to ask her grandmother for something to eat. Granny, how do you make plantains? Granny grinned. I know, I know, Shelly Ann said with a giggle. Kael, you better can cook. Granny laughed as she pulled out a frying pan and spatula. Pick some ripe plantains. Then peel and slice them into thin pieces. Fry the plantain slices in oil until brown and tender. Granny told Shelly Ann. The slices of plantain popped and sizzled in the oil and Shelly Ann's mouth watered. But when she took a bite, they were too mushy. I can't cook, cried Shelly Ann. Plantain slices need to be a little bit thinner, said Granny. Don't worry, you'll get it right next time. 
I don't want to learn how to cook anymore, Shelly Ann said. I have tried and tried and I never get it right. Granny wiped Shelly Ann's tears, then picked up her homemade recipe book and handed it to her granddaughter. If you try and don't succeed, try it, try and try again. When Shelly Ann woke up the next morning, she noticed that Granny was still asleep. She was very hungry, so she tiptoed into Granny's bedroom. Granny, whispered Shelly Ann, can you make me something good for breakfast? With a sigh, Granny replied, I am too tired to cook this morning. And she closed her eyes and went back to sleep. Shelly Ann went to the kitchen table and sat down. She opened the recipe book to find old pictures of family and friends from the neighborhood enjoying Granny's prize-winning dumplings. The smiles on all their faces reminded Shelly Ann how much joy Granny's dumplings bring to everyone. It must have taken Granny a lot of practice to make the perfect dumplings, Shelly Ann said to herself. Then she became excited. I just have to try, try and try again. Shelly Ann said, and don't forget the pinch of salt. She went out to the yard to gather what she needed. She hauled all the ingredients into the kitchen and pulled out a big Dutch pot and a skillet from the cupboard. She fried the dumplings, she cooked the ackee, she soaked the salt fish, she sliced the plantain just like Granny had taught her. Shelly Ann put all of her food onto two big plates and tiptoed into Granny's room. Granny, she whispered, wake up. Granny opened her eyes. Dumplings, a key, saltfish, and plantains? Granny was delighted. Granny took one bite of the food. Then she took another and another. Girl, you can cook, Granny exclaimed. Shelly Ann beamed with joy. I can, Granny nodded and said. And it's even better because you made it with love. Shelly Ann was very proud of herself for making Granny the perfect breakfast. The dumplings were not burnt, well, maybe a little. The ackee was not too soft, most of it anyway. The saltfish was not too salty, nothing a little pepper couldn't fix. And the plantains were not too mushy, at least the ones in the back weren't. Everything was eerie. What a beautiful story with a beautiful moral. I hope you have enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to buy a book for your home library to support the authors and publishers of this amazing book. Thank you.